In this video, I want to continue the introduction to generalised method of moments by talking about where we left off from before. So remember, in method of moments and generalised method of moments, what we have is we have a list of population moment conditions, which are defined using the expectations operator. Note that this is always the case, it's just that I've chosen to write the second condition in terms of the variance operator, but remember that the variance implicitly contains an expectations operator anyway. And what we do is for each of these population moment conditions, we form the sample analog, which is essentially just using the sample mean whenever we see the expectations operator. So we do that for each of, in this case, four moment conditions within our population. We formulate the equivalent within our sample. But the problem here is that we only have, in this case, k equals two parameters, which we are trying to estimate whereas we have a number of moment conditions which is equal to four. So we've got four equations which we need to satisfy, but only two degrees of freedom, and hence it's not in general going to be possible to satisfy all of these equations simultaneously. So instead, what we chose to do is we chose to define something which we called a sort of cost function. And what the cost function did is it measured the deviation of each of these moment conditions from that which would be theoretically obtained. So for the first case here, we derived something which we call G1, which was equal to the difference between one over N times the sum of XI minus mu hat. We did the same for G2, which was one over N times the sum of XI minus X bar. Sorry, in this case, it shouldn't be X bar actually, it should just be mu hat, mu hat all squared, minus sigma hat squared. And notice that in each of these cases, in G1, G2, in G3, and G4, it should actually be the case that if these actual moment conditions were satisfied perfectly, then each of these particular functions should have on, or should take on a value of zero. And then finally for G4, we have the, the sum of xi minus mu hat, all to the power four, minus three sigma hat to the power four, is our final cost function. So what we could do is we could choose, in this case, mu hat generalized method of moments, in other words, our method of moments estimator of mu, and sigma hat generalized method of moments, actually I'm gonna use sigma hat squared, to minimize some sort of, sort of linear combination of these costs. And of course, what we could do is we could say, well, let's take the absolute value of each of these costs because we don't care whether the cost is necessarily positive or negative. All we care about is absolute deviations. But perhaps an easier thing to do would be to minimize the sum of square costs. So what we could do is we could minimize something which I'm going to call S here, which is the sum from J equals one to four of the individual values of the sort of cost functions all squared. So this would be a sort of least squares choice of mu hat GMM and sigma hat squared GMM, and that might be okay. But we can ask ourselves, is this uh, the best solution? In other words, are there other solutions or other choices as to the cost function, or in terms of S here, that we could choose that might be superior to just minimizing the sum of individual deviations squared? And the answer would be that actually we can do better than just minimizing the sum of square costs. Because implicitly, by minimizing the sum of square costs with no weighting given to any particular moment condition, we are assuming that absolute deviations of any of these moment conditions are essentially equal. We're not taking into account the fact that some of these moment conditions will tend to deviate more than others. And which ones do we think are more likely to deviate? Well, it's quite easy really, because we imagine that the any number to the power four, so looking at this fourth moment condition here and looking at the fourth cost here, because we imagine that any number to the power four is gonna be a relatively big number, we might expect that the deviations which we would find in G4 due to sampling error might be greater in magnitude than that which is obtained in G1. And similarly for G2 and G3, so, what we might do is we might expect that as we go down here, then we are getting some sort of likely deviation 
in other words, likely cost, away from zero, which is getting greater. So as I move down here, you can sort of think about the variance of each of these cost functions as increasing. And intuitively, we shouldn't necessarily just weight deviations of each of these cost functions the same. We'd probably like to do something whereby we would apply a weight to a given cost function, which was in inverse proportion to its variance. So it might be better to minimize or to choose mu hat GMM and sigma hat squared GMM to minimize some square of the cost gj squared times by some weighting function wj, where in this case wj is sort of proportional to 1 over the variance of that particular moment condition which we're talking about here, or that particular cost function for that moment condition rather. Again we can ask ourselves is this the best solution and it turns out that no we can still do slightly better because we like to think that perhaps some of these moment conditions are actually correlated with one another. So you're not necessarily getting that much new information from let's say two opposed to four, for example. So actually what we end up doing is we end up defining something which we call G, and I'm gonna write a line underneath it to emphasize the fact that we're talking about a vector here. And G, I'm gonna call it actually G hat because actually each of these costs here really is something which we're estimating. So G1 hat, G2 hat, G3 hat, and G3 four hat. And we formulate a vector with each of these corresponding estimated costs because we're estimating them because we're actually using our estimators as inputs to them. So we go from G1 to G4 in this particular example and we formulate a vector of that. And then what that allows us to do is that allows us to formulate a more general cost which we're going to sort of minimize. I'm going to call it S double prime, which we can define in terms of matrices and vectors which is equal to g hat prime, in other words, the transpose of this, times by some weighting matrix, times by g hat. And here now this weighting matrix is allowed to contain off diagonal terms, which controls for the fact that some of these moment conditions are gonna be correlated with one another. And if we choose our two parameters up here to minimize this particular function here, then perhaps this is a better way to go about things. The only thing that we have to sort of think about now is how do we actually go ahead and estimate W? So I'm gonna actually have W hat here for our matrix because of course we don't actually know what is necessarily the covariance between these corresponding moment conditions. So that's gonna be something that we're gonna to need to estimate in its own right. And that's gonna formulate part of the two-step procedure which we in general use, or it's one of the methods used anyway, to come up with asymptotically efficient GMM estimates. In the first step, we estimate each of these cost functions after we've found mu and or mu hat and sigma squared hat to minimize just the simple least squares criteria. And then in the second step, we then use our corresponding cost functions to formulate the matrix W hat and then we go ahead and we choose mu hat GMM and sigma hat squared GMM to minimize this particular sum which I've written down here in matrix form.